Hi there, welcome to this course on running your Docker application with AWS Cloud. My name is Pranjal and I am your instructor for this class. Firstly, we are going to create our web application with the help of Python. And once we have our Python web application ready, we are going to containerize our application with the help of Docker and Docker file. And once we have built our Docker image, then we are going to push our Docker image into ECR, the Elastic Container Registry. It is just like a Docker Hub where you can store your Docker images up there so that you can access them from anywhere. Then we will learn about ECS, Elastic Container Services, through which you will be able to provision and manage your containers on AWS Cloud. And it has two different launch type. One is AWS Forget which is totally serverless solution for running up your container without managing the infrastructure. And the other launch type is running the ECS cluster with EC2, where you will get the option to fully manage the infrastructure. Meanwhile, we will also learn that how you can create the ECS cluster, creating your task, then running up your task and the services, and much more. That's all. If you are curious to learn more about the containerization services of AWS, then enroll this course right now. See you in the Hi, welcome back friend. Now you are already familiar with what is Docker and before heading to first the actual deployment of Docker images and all other concepts, let us first discuss the various stats that clearly signifies the increasing demand for Docker among the professionals and why you should learn Docker. As you can see here, Docker is most wanted technology in the IT sector and professionals are showing a high interest in Docker over time. These stats are taken from Stack Overflow survey which is actually a kind of annual developer survey where developers shows their interest whatever technology they are using or whatever they want to be in future. And here the next stat here docker is chosen as the second most loved platform on the internet and you can see here that docker is gaining the popularity and the love over time and it is above the kubernetes aws even mac os which simply signifies the growing demand for this docker technology now here i'm going to present some more graphs and figure which is taken from docker.com over three years and here in all the figures I found something interesting which is that there is always a upward trend is there whether we are talking about total number of pools in the docker hub or total installation of docker desktop or whether I'm talking about number of users and the repositories in docker hub all are increasing over time this simply signifies the demand of docker and companies are adopting this technology the docker technology and looking after the docker professionals this simply means that docker is a hot topic in the id sector and if you have a skill on docker then it will be very helpful for your career path either you are building a new career or want to do switch between the companies docker is very crucial technology and it will help you a lot this is the timeline of technology the evolution of technologies where it started from 1950 the first commercial computer and then there is mainframe computer in 1960s then there is desktop computer in 1970 there is a difference between the 10 to 20 years between them but after internet mass adaption after 2000 the technologies evolution the period between them the gap between them is decreased like and 2003 AWS launched then over two years Intel virtual technology has released then AMD then KVM LXC and Hyper-V these are virtual virtualization technologies were introduced in the technology world and virtual machine has a, a great advantage like it gives an isolated environment with the high security but 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 when we compare it with docker like container technology there are some 
how lagging behind them like dockers are lightweight they can boot fast as well as they are portable and can easily scale and in upcoming years the darker will be at the peak the demand is increasing and after darker 2015 kubernetes released and then to 2016 windows container released so the time between them is also reduced and this is a huge shift from the 1950s to 2016 the world is changing and they're adopting a new technologies and darker like container technologies are the new one and it's going to be evolved over the time and the best thing is that till now darker is uh, eight year old even it is not have experience of one decade as well and it is growing massively so it will going to be rise and if you have a tech skill on this darker it will be very very helpful okay now let us compare with darker with other containers technology like there is container d windows container rkt and podman among them windows container and podman are having uh, some weightage over container d and rkt but when you compare this darker with other alternatives you will find that they are negligible if you're going to compare with Docker. Docker has a huge popularity and everyone using this Docker and I have shown the stats that there is a massive activity in the Docker hub as well. So now I think that now you don't have a confusion like why should I learn Docker? I would recommend that having a skill on Docker will be very very helpful for you all the best for the future and see you in the class hey there and welcome back in this lesson we're going to learn that how this docker run command work just like printing hello world program in any of the programming language we're going to use this hello world image so what happened when we written on this command it looked for that particular image in our local registry but when it doesn't get that it just pulled that particular image from the docker hub and executed the container for it. So what happened? This is a docker client where we written down some kind of commands there. Then it used with the help of APIs, it communicated with the docker server or you can say docker daemon. Then docker daemon started all the process, all the container related process, right? Pulling up the docker image, then creating the container from that particular image and so on things. Now I'm going to create another container and you can say it as a interactive batch session. Okay. So what it will going to do here, it again searched for that Ubuntu image, but it didn't get that. So it pulled that image from the Docker hub. And as I said that it is an interactive batch session. So we are inside that Ubuntu container. And once we are going to exit from this interactive session, then this container will automatically will be exited and this is how this interactive session works okay now let me run some of the basic commands and this is the whole structure the file structure of ubuntu container now let us use some of the commands and here i'm going to list the images which are right there in my local registry so check it out you can use this docker images command and here you will get the list of all the images which are there in our local registry now to check the containers which are there just write down docker container space ls okay remove this and yep and here you can see that only one container is running right now that hello world one is is exited after performing that task now this ubuntu will be going to be exited once we are going to exit from this interactive session let me show you out i have exit from this interactive session let me open the next terminal and then check it out now you can see the containers both the container having the same status they are existed with the status zero so this is how the whole scenario looks like okay and we're going to learn more about docker related commands let me show you that how many commands are there in the docker just you need to write this docker in your 
terminal and you will get the bunches of the commands so options commands like build compose config these are very very useful commands and are all are related to the management commands and the command section where we have attach build create and managing the containers debugging the containers process related commands and many many other commands are there we're going to learn each of them now let us focus on that how you can log in into your registry so for it you need to use the docker login command but before it i must log out from this session as i have already logged in into it now let me show you that how this process looks like just you need to write docker space login then it will ask for the username write down your docker hub username and the password which is will be not visible okay now it will going to save all your credentials into your config file and the location is also there so this is how you can easily log in into your registry using the command line so hope you are interested in this upcoming lessons see you in the next class Hi and welcome back friend. In this lesson, I will show you that how you can start interactive bash session using docker run command. So simply write down docker run and then you need to provide the name of your container name which is ubuntu bash here. Then write hyphen it which is used together in order to allocate tty for your container processes. Then you need to provide the name of your docker image which is ubuntu latest here and at last bash. Voila, we are now inside this ubuntu container let us check that our container is running or not the current status of our container just simply write down docker container space ls ls simply means list okay and here we find that our container is running right now and it will work till that we exit from that interactive session okay now i think it is the best time to execute this docker exec command which is used to run a command inside the running container and here I'm going to create a simple test file for it you need to provide the name of your container and you need to write down the, the, the command which you want to run inside that container and here we tried to create a test file now let us check that the command which we run from the outside container it worked fine or not and here you can see the test file is created from outside so this is how this docker is a command work hey friend welcome back here in this lesson we are going to create a simple python web application using flask and here i'm using pycharm ide and i will suggest using this ide because it makes your work much easier and you will get bunch of options within the same window now you are inside this virtual environment and now I'm going to check it out that any kind of libraries and packages are installed into this virtual environment and you will get nothing. So this is how I have isolate my project with other project using this virtual environment here. Okay, now I'm going to install this Flask library which is required for now and we're going to add some more libraries later on. Okay, now you will find like there are a list of libraries and packages are there which are much related to Flask and now first and foremost we need to import flask package just write down from flask import flask now let's create a application instance for our flask app and here i'm going to give it a app name here i'm going to pass some special variable of python which is name here okay now we need to add some decorator into it This decorator thing is very useful as it will going to convert your simple Python function into class view function, which means like whatever the value it will going to return from this hello world function, it will become the HTTP response. So whenever we are going to hit this URL, our base URL of the web application, it will going to simply retrieve this string which i'm going to pass here inside this hello world function keep learning and keep moving ahead it's not a simple string it's a slogan which i generally use and apply into my daily life okay now we're going to run this application for it you need to mention app.run and inside it 
you need to pass the things like ports host name or any other thing like debug okay so here i'm just going to put this debug equal true so whenever i'm going to run this application we will get whatever things going behind the scene okay now i'm going to add ports as well and you can give any port number okay and here i'm using simply 5001 okay now our code is completed now let's run this application here okay now we have run our application and you can see that our string which we've passed through this hello world is displaying here in our web page just because of http response okay now this is my local host and with the port number which is 5001 which we passed using this app dot run okay now i'm going to stop this application and uh, so this is how you can create a simple python web application using flask hey friend welcome back here in this lesson we're going to cover what docker file looks like and how you can write your own docker file in my previous lesson we went through the process of deploying simple python web application now in this part we're going to simply look after this docker file for it we require the base image and here base image is python this is the official docker hub website and here you will get bunches of different kind of tags there which you can use okay i'm going to use this mid one okay 3.9.5 buster okay now let's create the docker file docker file is simply uh build instructions to build the docker image okay now the first part is from command which tell us what kind of image to base this off and it is a multi-layer approach which makes docker so efficient and powerful in this instance we are going to use this python docker image which again refers the another docker file to automate the build process okay now let me mention that what this we're going to do here in the comment section now the other most important part is to add our project file into it okay for it we're going to use the add command here okay so let me write down the comment section here import code okay so whatever i'm writing inside this comment it will be very useful when you're going to download this docker file okay now just simply write add space dot which means your current directory and slash and your code okay so it will not going to create a code directory inside your docker container okay your docker image okay now i'm going to change my directory and go inside this code directory and now we require to install all kind of libraries and packages so that we are able to run our applications okay as we know this docker makes your deployment much easier and you can run it anywhere so we are creating the docker image through which a container will going to run so whatever your app which is inside your docker image whatever the packages and libraries which were required for that application you need to put down there okay now i'm going to simply expose the port which is here which is 5001 and now i'm going to simply run our the main python function the main python driver file which is that main.py and here i'm going to simply use this cmd which is stands for command and it will going to run this python main.py so this is my docker file look like and uh, now i'm going to build our first docker image make sure that docker diamond is running if it is not running then it will not able to pull this base image and we will get some kind of error there okay now the command which i'm going to use here is docker build command and here i'm going to put down hyphen t which simply means tag or through which you are just naming your docker image and we're going to call it as a flask tab here and the path where your docker file is which is the current directory so simply put down that dot now it started all the process which is here to extract the 
base image from the Docker Hub official website into our local registry. Okay, so whenever we're going to use this Python base image, we're not required to again pull this up from the Docker Hub. Okay, now our Docker image is ready. Let me check it out using this Docker image command, and here you will get the list that how many docker images are there inside your system it's always a good practice to use git and github as a developer and it is very helpful when you're working with a team and they are located at different locations so that you can share your code and then build your application and also git and github very useful to maintain the version of the project as well now here i'm going to create a simple github repository and here there's nothing so now I'm going to copy this URL and open my git bash here. I have already logged in into it. So there's no need to log in into this terminal. Now to initialize your empty git repository, just use this git init command. Now to check the current status, just use this git status command. You will get all the files inside your current directory are all untracked. Now here there are some of the files and directories which I don't want to push into the GitHub repository. So I'm going to create the .git ignore file. This is a file where you can keep all the files and directories details which you don't want to push it to the GitHub. Okay, so here this one directory that I don't want to push into my GitHub and I'm going to copy it here and yes, it's very easy to do so. Now let's check it out that for the current status and you'll find that .idea directory which for showing earlier is not there okay and uh, now i'm going to make all the files to track one you need to use this git add command okay let's write down git space add space dot which simply means all the files in that current directory will going to be added now you will find that all the files are now tracked one and now it's time to commit them so that our local repository we let it know that what are the files and what are the codes which are inside that files and maintain the version and here we successfully maintain the first version of our project now it's time to push our code into the github and i have already shown you that the remote url of our github repository okay now i'm going to use the git remote command to add that remote repository url okay so let me check it out that any other remote URLs attached to this or not as you can find there's nothing so here you can clearly copy this and just write git remote add origin and that URL which you have copied from there so now after it it will going to Add this remote URL now you can use it for fetch or you can use it for push now the last step is to push into the github repository just write down git push origin master as you can find here that it is set to the master branch so I simply written down the master branch so all the files will going to be added into this master branch but what happened here that the github repository when I have created it already have a branch name with main so we don't require this main branch right now so it's better to delete this branch let me show you that how you can delete one so in the setting option you will get the option to change your default branch to the master branch and then at last we're going to delete this main branch and yes all the files all the project related source codes are pushed to this github repository so you can free to use this code anywhere where you want and it will be very helpful to practice it okay all right now we have learned how to build docker image using docker file now let us execute this docker image to create our first docker container where our application will going to be run and don't worry about the size of this image this is an issue and the docker team is working on it and we are using python buster image its size is too much it's approximately 20 mb so leave this apart now let us dive into this docker image and here 
you will can find the complete history of our docker image all the things happen with this image are described here i think you have noticed or not but you can see here that the all the process which are happened with this docker image is it is in the reverse order okay and you can see that that at the, at the top you will find the command which we written down at the last line of the docker file so this is all the steps all the process which happened with this docker image now let us execute this docker run command to create the docker container just simply write docker run hyphen it and hyphen p p parameter is just to map your host port 5001 to the container port of 5001 okay and you need to provide the name of your docker image which is flask app here just copy it down and hit the enter button so now our application is running inside the docker container let's check it out using this url and you find that this page is not working right now and you know that what happened here let me explain to you that problem which we face here that firstly we built a local host interface but we should bind it with the 0.0.0.0 host so that we can access our container from outside for just because of different linux kernel docker con container kernel and our pc container are totally different that's why we are unable to use that same local host interface to access the docker container application so it, it will not going to work if you're going to think that same local host will work here but not so here to interact with that in container you need to use the bridge communication the bridge network here and if you're going to log in into directly into this docker container you will find it just you need to execute this ip address command to get the complete information related to your ip networks of that container now i've already uh, checked it out before so now i simply uh, written on this the 0.0.0. .0 host name either you can write that broadcast uh, ip there but it's okay to use this one okay so our application is now running now i'm going to run this command again and you can see here there is new ips here that ip which i'm talking about and it will not going to open our application which is running inside that docker container so is it a little cool is it so we have executed the docker container and also check that our application inside the docker container is running or not and it worked fine so in the later part of series we will going to dive into more in this docker thing hi and welcome back friend now in this lesson we are going to push our docker images into docker hub so let me build the image again as i have deleted that image so to build your image you need to simply execute this command docker build hyphen d and the name of your image and the location where your docker file is so it will take hardly one minute to create uh, image okay now we have a docker image let me show you and it is flask app here and now you need to log in into the docker hub using this docker login command as all the credentials were saved so it log in it easily now you need to push your image to the docker hub so here i'm going to use this docker push command but before it we need to create a public repository in the docker hub docker hub is a repository a cloud-based repository which stores uh made different kinds of images just like a github github stores source code and in this case we can download or publish our container image there and you can have the plugins as well these are some docker related repositories okay and uh, i'm going to create a new repository here i have already published some of them 
now to create a repository you need to provide a name and there are two options there one is public repository or private repository i will choose this public repository so that it can be accessible by anyone whereas the private repository can be accessible by concerned team or to whom you want to share okay our public repository on docker hub is created now i'm going to use this psrv3 slash flask app this psrv3 is my docker hub username so the first thing which i need to do here is to tag my local image using this docker tag command just use the name of your image which is flask app and with the name of this psrv slash flask app okay now let's paste it here and now we have successfully tagged our local docker image with that image okay now i'm going to push that image to the docker hub and it will take hardly two to three minutes let me fast up the process and this will be able to push up our docker image to the docker hub now let me refresh this page then you will find that in the tags and the scan section the latest tag is there and we just pulled our image within a few seconds ago okay now i'm going to show you some of the things like how you can pull this docker hub image and how to make use of it okay now this is the public view of my docker hub repository now i'm going to use this docker run hyphen it hyphen p 5001 not 5001 the ports and uh, you need to give the name of that image which is psrv3 slash flask app okay now just paste it here and run it so it all things started let me show you the container section and open in the browser so it worked fine okay now i'm going to delete all the images you may think that i've already have the image with the, this thing saved on local so it's better to delete that one and again run this command okay these are the logs of this running container yeah, I remove that container right now and now I'm going to delete all the images which are there there's both images so you need to use this RMI command and you need to provide both the name of your images and it is deleted as well as untagged okay now we don't have any kind of images in our system so now it's time to run that command docker run one you can see there is nothing is there but i have logged into my docker hub desktop and here you can see that in the remote repository tab my flask app is there okay either you can pull the image from there or you can simply use this docker pull command to pull that image now let me show you some more things and here you can see that it is tagged to this our online repository here you can find the images layer there are multiple images layer and each layer have a their role like installing something then adding the files and so on things okay now i'm going to use that docker pull command to pull this image okay this command and open your command prompt and just see there is no images there right now I need to use this docker pull command and if you're going to download everything and it pulled the thing okay now I'm going to run this docker run then again hyphen it p for the ports and uh, this psr with three flask app at the end so it will going to 
run this container again it is taken from this docker.io which simply means that it pulled the images from the docker hub okay so don't be confused now we have pulled the images from the docker hub and it is now running on our local system so this application is working fine it means whatever image we created using docker file and it is now posted to the docker hub is working fine now you can share the link of this repository so that anybody can use this application hey friend welcome back so before getting started with ecr the elastic container registry here we are going to create the docker image okay you can find uh main.py where i have just created a simple flask application which will going to show this special message keep learning and keep moving ahead okay well here i have used only one library which is flask which is used for creating the web development things now our task is to create the docker image okay so let me show you that before creating the docker image that we don't have any docker image right now in my system even there are no container is running as well so keep uh, one point on your mind like when you are creating the docker image the docker engine must be in running mode okay now let me show you the docker file that how it looks like okay and here i'm going to use this docker build command to build the docker image so it it has started the process now let's dive into this docker file here you will require the python the base file then i have created a, a directory then we move that towards that directory and then we simply install the required library which is flask here and at last i have exposed my port which is 5001 which my application will going to response on it and at last we just simply run the main driver function for this application so as you can see on my screen that as I have clear all the cache before creating this docker image that's why it's taking too much time because it is downloading this python base image from the docker hub okay so actually this elastic container registry is just an alternative for docker hub where we're we going to store this docker image and then we can run this docker image from anywhere and the best part is that it is totally platform independent and lightweight as well so we have ended with the process you can see all the things are set up right now now let me clear the screen and see that our docker image is ready or not that's right docker images and you will find our docker image is ready right now till till now we don't have container running so now i'm going to run this docker image actually this container contains the docker image okay so just going to write docker space run space it which means for interactive and then you need to give the port port for your application for your container and the port for your local from through which you're going to give the request and the name of your docker image so it is started now we got some error here the space is not working right now let me check that why it is not working as you can see here if you're going to run this application on the local host machine then you don't require the host ip but when you are going to run your application through this docker image which later on we're going to create the docker container it requires the ip so the ip which you need to use here is 0.0.0.0 okay and that's all now let us run this application through this url and where it is yes now it is working fine now this is the url even you can write localhost as well to access your application okay so this is how you can simply create the docker image locally and then run that docker image into the form of docker container okay hope you have understand about little bit how you can simply deploy this 
darker things so in the next part we're going to jump into ecr section so for now keep learning keep exploring and stay motivated hey friend welcome back in my previous lesson i have shown you that how you can simply create the darker image and here in this lesson you're going to learn that how you're gonna push that darker image into this ecr so from here you can create the repository the ecr repository you will get some options like private and public then then you will get some option like the to add some name to that repository so here i'm going to just put this my flask app here and here you can also upload any logo for your repository you can add some descriptions and also you can choose that on which kind of platform your image will going to work so i'm going to select all of the platforms like linux and windows and the architecture as well and here you can give your information under this about section then the uses where you can use this particular image so here our repository is created and now you need to push the docker image here because we don't have any image right there okay now let me give us some points for this ecr that what exactly this ecr is so it is a fully managed docker container registry it is just like a docker hub your red head qa where you are going to store and manage your docker container image even you can deploy them okay so this ecr can be easily integrated with the ecs the elastic container services as well as eks the elastic kubernetes services it is just simplifying the process it is just simplifying the development production various other steps okay it is just simplifying it so here now i'm going to use this set of commands to push my docker image which i've created in my previous lesson to up there to this ecr repository so first of all the very first step is to log in and i've already copied that particular piece of code and you can see here that we have successfully logged in okay now we need to build the docker image which i have already build it okay but once again i'm going to do the same task okay so it is again doing the same thing which we did earlier okay now the third step is to tag your docker image now we're going to give the name to this newly created docker image okay so we did this now i'm going to you can see here the docker image we got a new docker image with this tag and this tag is closely related to our ECR repository. Here you can see the name is exactly similar to our ECR repository. Now we need to push our Docker image to ECR. So we need to copy that particular command. As you can see that there is no images in our repository, but after running that command, it will going to push this Docker image to ECR. So while it is doing its stuff, let us discuss some of the points related to this Docker Hub and ECR. So both of them have this feature of public repository as well as private repository. And uh, this ECR supports MFA for pushing and pulling your image. Whereas this Docker Hub doesn't have this kind of feature. Second thing, this ECR has 99.9% .9 of SLA availability okay where this docker hub doesn't have that level then you can create the immutable images using ecr but there is no support for these immutable images in docker hub image scanning is at root of this ecr while you are pushing your things up there it is actually doing the scanning things as well but it is there into docker hub as well but for it you will require the paid plans okay as we know this public repository in docker hub is free of cost and you can also create one private repository on docker hub which is free but to create some more private repository you need to be charged 
and image scanning will be charged okay so a lot of things are missing in the docker hub which we have in this amazon ecr so well these are some of the key differences between ecr and the docker hub and now you can see that our docker images is also uploaded also pushed to this ecr repository and here you got some of the image details like its image tag the image uri the repository name and the manifest file something so and also it showing the size of our image which is 344 mb you can choose the python base image accordingly to reduce the size okay i just use the default one now from here you can public your registry from here and as it is as it is a public repository you can view your repository into this amazon ecr public gallery now let us check that our repository is here or not okay so there are a lot of repositories are already present let us check it out that our repository is there or not in this gallery this public gallery okay so you can find that our repository is there and this is our image okay so now anyone who has this, the link for this particular thing and it will going to you pull this particular image through this URL public.ecr.aws then the ID and then name of our docker image and the tag which is latest here so you can get some of the informations there now I'm going to change the name the display name which is was showing there to the uh, new name a custom name okay either you can put your name in the display name section or to if you want to be uh, anonymous okay you don't want to show your name so you can simply write any random name any nickname so here i have used this aws uh, user account which which is set for my account aws account so now you can see that there is default alias which is have some particular extra digits is there okay and custom alias is the name which we put down there now when i'm going to refresh this you can see the name is now changed which is by aws david 21 and the id which is there will be remain you can see public.acr.aws dash and that particular thing is there so from here you can uh, if you want to do some any changes there it will also going to reflect there into that particular gallery hope you understand about this ecr now keep learning keep exploring and stay motivated so let's get down to the business in the previous lesson i have shown you today how you can create the public repository now in this part we're going to create the private repository here okay so as you can see we got some numbers up there in the url some 10 digits number i think so basically it is the id for this repository name okay to uniquely identify this private repository okay so we have successfully created the private repository and here we don't have any docker image right now so now we need to follow the first step which is to retrieve an authentication token and then authenticate our docker client to the registry so i have copied that chunk of code here and now we have successfully logged in to our registry as well so now we need to build the docker image again it is not required because we already have the docker image now we need to use this tag command the docker tag command to give the tag to this image okay so if i'm going to run this docker image command you will get this public.ecr.aws1 and then we have another docker image for the prior repository okay now we have done we need to only push this docker image to prior repository of ecr okay through this amazon ecr we can have as much as prior repository we don't have any limitations there but in case if you're using docker hub then you will got only one prior repository okay so if you want to create some more prior repository up there 
so you need to pay some charges okay whereas in ECR you can create as much as the prior repository now as you can see now we have successfully pushed our docker image into this prior repository now we have the same docker image on private as well as public repository and here you can see different options different details of this particular image now let us explore some of the other options which are there like i'm going to scan this particular image okay and let us check that how the report that about this docker image okay so till then we can we're going to explore some of the points like lifecycle policies like if you want to remove your unused images then at what time it will going to be removed okay so you can set different lifecycle policies up there then here we got some vulnerabilities not some actually it is 502 vulnerabilities okay so don't worry it's just a sample uh, docker image which i have created and uh, it doesn't mean that it doesn't have any kind of vulnerabilities so these are this is the benefit of using this docker sorry this amazon ecr through which you can do some image scanning and here you will got some bunches of information like there is only one critical vulnerability then 15 high and rest are like they are vulnerabilities but they are not too much highly concerned okay so don't be worried don't see the number the big number there so that's all there is that how you can set up this private and public repository using this amazon ecr if you have any kind of doubt you can ask me in the q a section so for now keep learning keep exploring and stay motivated hello friend welcome back in this lesson you will learn about ECS elastic container service it is basically the managed container orchestration which is hosted on AWS through which you can manage your container lifecycle like it includes the provisioning of your container then deployment of your container scaling up scaling down networking the load balancing and much more you can do various job with this container orchestration tool it is just like a Docker Swarm, the Kubernetes, even OpenShift, they are basically the container orchestrations. And it is required because once you have multiple containers, it will become quite complex to handle them. So it will going to automate the process and remove the complexity. So that's all about container orchestration and the ECS. So let's create our first cluster here. And here you will get three cluster templates. One is networking only template, then EC2 Linux plus networking, then EC2 Windows plus networking. Okay, let me discuss each of them. So the very first template which we have which is networking only, it is used to create an empty cluster, which is typically used for the container instance which are hosted either on Fargate or any external instances like ECS Anywhere, which includes the on-premise services as well as on cloud. Okay, so that's the another thing. So then we have EC2 Linux plus networking and EC2 Windows plus networking. They both are similar as they are both going to use the EC2 instance here. One is for creating the Linux container and other one is for creating the Windows container. And the rest of the things are the same. Okay, so now here I'm going to select the networking only template as the purpose here is to create the AWS Fargate services, which is a serverless thing. Okay, now you need to configure your cluster give any name for your cluster then as said you can also add the vpc into this template so i'm going to create a vpc for this cluster and if you want to add some tags you can even add some tags into it so now we will have a ecs cluster and here we are to create the fargate services so fargate services is a serverless compute for the containers with the help of this fargate you need to only build a container image then you need to define the memories and the compute resource which is required to run your container image and then it will going to run and manage your application so here the best part is you only have to pay for the requested compute resources when it is going to use okay not like if you are going to run with ec2 you need to pay for that particular EC2 instances but here the picture is different here you need to pay only for the requested compute resources okay 
so that's the best part of using this AWS Forget. So here we are using our AWS Forget, and later on I'm going to show you as well that how you can create the cluster with the EC2 instance as well. So as you can see that our ECS cluster has been created and some of the things are left and it is also completed right now. So we have created the ECS cluster for the AWS Forget with the help of CloudFormation stack. Okay, so we have a cluster with some VPC and subnets into it and uh, to manage the serverless compute containers. Okay, so in the next part, I'm going to discuss about task and the services as well. And then we're going to deploy our application. Here you will get an option for updating your cluster details. And you can also able to delete your cluster from this, op uh, this option. Okay. So that's all in this for this lesson as we have created the cluster, the Flask cluster here. Okay. So, so for now, keep learning, keep exploring and stay motivated. Hey friend, welcome back. In my previous lesson, I have shown you that how you can create the ECS cluster using the networking only template, okay, for AWS Fargat. So let me revisit some of the points which are very important here. Like this AWS Fargat is a technology that you can use with Amazon ECS to run your container. And here you don't need to manage the EC2 instances. So with AWS Fargat, you don't don't need to actually provision configure or scale the cluster of your ec2 instances to run the application so it removes the problem of choosing the server type then deciding that when to scale your cluster and how to optimize the cluster and various other things here it will just going to charge like whatever required compute is there okay and it is very easy to set up the AWS Forget, and here I'm going to show you that how you can create the task here. Okay, so let's get into it. So this is task definition page, and here you can define the task. So basically, we are going to specify the container information for our application, that how many containers are required for this task, how much resource they are going to utilize, how they are linked to each other. If if you have multiple containers and on which port they're going to respond and various other options okay so let's click on this create new task definition and here you will get three options one is forget ec2 and the external which is on-premise thing okay now here you need to configure your task and container definition so either you can create the new task role if it is there already just select that one and then you need to give the task definition name here and then the network mode which is already selected which is AWS VPC and uh, you need to choose the execution IAM role here which is same as previous one then you need to select the task size the memory the CPU utilization here now here the main thing is to add the container okay so I have already pushed one of my docker image to Amazon ECR okay it is just like a docker hub okay where you push your docker image up there so you need to give the name of your container and then you need to specify the image name okay so here i'm using this prior repository url okay and uh, you need to provide the port number through which you can actually do some port mapping to your application okay so this is uh, this is my application basically and here i have used 5001 port number okay so you need to provide that stuff here and uh, you can also add some health check like at what time your container is responding and then timeouts then storage and logging and then resource limit that at that resource it will not going to proceed and you can even add some docker labels for your understanding and that's all so you can also integrate your 
service integrations and various other things you can set up here like volumes as well if you want to give some extra volume to this container if it is required as my application doesn't require that much of thing so i have not selected that volume thing and here you can either choose the ebs the efs things okay so this is uh the json format for my template for my actually task definition from now through this action i can run my this task okay there is an option for update as well these are some of the options if you want to do some changes you can do from here so that's all in my next lesson i'm going to show you that how this task will going to work hello friend welcome back so before running our task let us revisit some of the important concepts which I have already discussed about Amazon ECS task. So this task definition is required to run our Docker container in Amazon ECS and where you can set the Docker image that how much CPU and memory will going to be utilized by our application. Then what type of launch we are going to use like forget, easy to or on-premise things. Then you can set up some networking settings there, the loggings, the volumes and environment variables as well as am rules and lots of other things which we configure into this the task okay so here in this lesson i'm going to show you the how you can run the task so here you need to select again this launch type to the forget and here you need to select the number of the task okay here i'm just going to run only one task here then in the network settings you need to select all the default options now all the things is done now now let us tap this run task button and yes as you can see that under this task tab our task is now provisioning and the desired state is the running state so it will take a quite time and once it will ready then you can easily access your application the application which is derived by the docker image which will going to create the docker container and that's how you are actually interacting with your container okay so in the next part i'm going to show you that after it will be in the running state how you can access your application that's all keep learning keep exploring and stay motivated hello friend welcome back as you can see on my screen our task is in running state and these are some of the details of our task that network here you can have your private ip the public ip then eni id as well then here you can find the logs of your application here this simply means that our application is in running state okay our container is in actually in running state so now our task is to access our application and to do so we need to do some of the network configurations okay before it let me show you some more things about this task and as you can see this is the bunches of information about our container okay we didn't configure that much of settings but still our application is running state okay no this is our public ip now i'm going to use this particular public ip to access our application and our application will going to use this 5001 port number okay so as you can see we the side is not reachable which simply means that something is still missing and here we're going to figure it out and to solve this problem and then access our application so here you will get this network interface id and inside this network interface id you will get information about your security group okay inside the security group you will get option about the inbound rule the inbound rule will going to define that what kind of traffic will going to be accepted by your application your container okay so now i'm going to enable this port number 5001 here inside this inbound rule and uh, anywhere ip4 i'm going to select here and then going to save these rules okay now we have made some changes here now you can see inside this inbound rules our custom rule is also added inside this security group which is attached to that 
our task okay so now i'm going to if i'm going to run this particular thing then it's going to work for us okay let me check one more time that the configuration which we did is still there or not and it is there okay so well our configuration is has been completed now as you can see we are able to access our application so you need to do some things like you need to add the inbound rules to able to access your application now i'm also going to show you that suppose if you are going to have high traffic and then how your application will going to respond to that okay so it's better to rerun the task means uh, till now we have only one task for our aws firegate but instead of running one task you can even run some more similar task okay so it will going to balance the traffic so let me show you that how it will going to work you need to do this, the same settings like the default setting which we did earlier and our task is now in the provisioning state now once it will be ready we need to do the same changes again like inside this in network interface id then we need to go that security group and then we need to change the inbound rules for that particular task as well now let me do the same thing again so this is the inbound rule we don't have that one so your custom tcp then you need to put your port number through which you are able to access your application then ip anywhere okay so we have successfully made same changes to our newly created task okay so now let us figure out that our application our going to work with this task too or not okay so i have again verified it that particular inbound rules was present or not okay so we got another ip another url and let us open into new tab and you need to put that port at number as well which is 5001 and as you can see we are able to access our application with two different ips okay so to shift the traffics so this is all about ecs firegat how you can run your container image to deploy your application so keep learning keep exploring and stay motivated all right now you are already familiar with container related keywords like container itself container orchestration how this ecs cluster work what are aws forget and various other things we have already discussed all about it in this lesson we're going to create the ecs cluster with the help of ec2 linux plus networking template so let me revisit some of the concepts like we have three templates one is networking only other one is ec2 linux plus networking and the third one is ec2 windows plus networking so the first template which is to create the empty cluster and we don't require a dedicated infrastructure for it we are totally focused on the serverless cluster thing okay and now we are creating the ecs cluster where we have the ec2 instance as well to have a complete control over the infrastructure where we can run the task our services on that cluster the cluster which will going to be run inside our amazon ec2 instance so if you want to run a service or your task on a serverless infrastructure then go for aws forget but if you want to have more control over your infrastructure so then you need to use this template where we have set up all of the things with the ec2 linux plus networking here the only difference between ec2 linux and the ec2 window is that in ec2 linux it will going to create the linux container whereas in the ec2 windows it will going to create the windows container and that's the only major thing which you need to uh, make sure okay that what kind of container you require okay so in both the case ec2 instance will be going to create now this is my cloud formation stack 
you are already familiar with Azure, then you must be know about the resource group. This is just similar to the resource group where you can manage multiple resources into one place. Okay, so you can delete all of the resource just by deleting the CloudFormation stack. Okay, so now we have created the ECS cluster with the help of CloudFormation stack. Now this is our cluster EC2 EC2 cluster. Okay, and the status you can see here it is active and there is no services no tasks running up there and inside this ecs instance tab you will get the container instance so let's check it out some of the details of our container instance here you will get the name of your cluster then the ec2 instance id is also there then the operating system is linux and the LLT zone then the public and the private ips and lots of options are available here okay so if you're know about the ec2 that it will be quite easy for you because we are going to do some of the changes in the ec2 instance as well so that we can easily access our application which is running inside the container okay so let me show you about um, this ec2 container instance so here it is it is so this is our ec2 instance it is also in running state you can see as well here you can have the access about your ec2 it is using this d2.micro one and the status is not completed fully as i can see on my screen it is still in the initializing mode so once our instance set be ready we'll be able to connect our ec2 instance okay now here you will get public private ips to communicate with this ec2 instance now these are some details of the ec2 now you need to go inside the security group and here we need to set up some inbound rules okay so that we can access the application so as you can see only one inbound rule is set up so now i'm going to configure uh, actually I'm going to add one more inbound rule so all TCP and uh, anywhere okay then save the rules so whatever there is no restriction right now okay it can accept any kind of protocols okay so in the next lesson I'm going to show you that how you can create the tasks and the services so for now keep learning keep exploring and stay motivated hey friend welcome back in my previous lesson, I have shown you that how you can create the cluster, the ECS cluster with EC2. Now, in this part, we're going to define the task. So, give any name for your task here. Then, here you will require this EC2 capabilities. Then, you need to select the task role, then network mode. And here, I'm going to select the default one. Now, here you need to select the IAM role, the task size. You can put any number here according to, to the requirement. Okay. So here you need to give a specific number 10, I think 1 GB will be sufficient or 512, okay. I'm going to give 512 value on both of them. From here you can set up some volumes and various other options. You can add something. Now here you need to also define the container, okay. And here you need to set up the Docker image through which a container will going to run okay so this is the my container the docker image which i have stored up there into ecr okay now here it will also require some other things here like that on which particular port you want to expose your container and through which port you can access the particular application which is running inside your container so this is my application where i have used um the port number is 5001 okay so here i'm going to use this particular number here 5001 and again you can give any number 8080 as well 8080 uh, and 8080 and the 5001 okay so these are some of the port mapping which i'm doing here for the host port and the container port 
Now here you can add some more storage, security, labels, resource limits and I don't think so that anything is required for my application here. Okay, so here we got some error like host port must be unique across all containers. Okay, okay, so I'm going to remove some of them from here because it is giving an error here. So I think this 5001 and 5001 will be okay here. Now I have added a container. Okay, you can also add even health check also. Now the thing is, um, eighty eighty and five thousand one. Okay, so th this is the thing which I have did here, and now our task explanation is created. Now in the next part, I'm going to show you that how you can run your task and how you can access your application. Now the options I have left because I don't require right now, but you can use if you're already familiar with Docker and Docker related things. That's all. Keep learning. Keep so now I'm going to run our task here. Okay. So here you can see that there are some of the task definition which I have already declared them. So this is the task definition which we configured in my previous lesson and here we got some options like action through which you can run your task even create a service from that task definition and so on things easier services i'm going to discuss all about it in the next lesson which is to run your container for longer period of time and uh, like you want to run some of your container all the time as well which we can do with the easier services now we have run the easiest task here as you can see it is in the pending state and once it will change into the running state which is the desired one here then we will be able to access the running container and the running application inside the container so while you are going to create a service it eventually will going to create the task okay and it will be a self-healing task like whatever happens to this task any error comes into it and and it failed then we're going to run a new task in that particular task the field task okay so so our task is now running which simply indicates that our application will also be running in state so here you will get some of the options and let me open each of them in the, into the new tabs you can see here you you got some public ip and the private ip as well so let us use this public ip to access our application you you can see here that we are able to access our application this happens because we have already set up the inbound settings okay that's why we, do, we don't got any errors here and it open in one shot so here you will have public ips private ips the status you can see from here the running task which is one here and the resources the memory and the port which it is utilizing it you can see all of the things up there and that's all this is how you can create a task and access your application in case if you want to update your task you can also do this and in case you if you want to run such task you can also have that option also available here so it's very easy to uh, run your containerized application up there into aws containerization options like ecs forget and ecs ec2 version okay so we got lots of options there and that's all so if you have any kind of doubt you can ask me in the q a section so for now keep learning keep exploring and keep moving ahead all right now in this part i'm going to talk about easier services so before jumping into it i'm going to discuss some of the important things related to easier services and easiest task so you might be confused with these two terms 
because ACS DAS and the ACS services they are going to do the same thing but the major difference between them is that ECS task is used for short term task for short term goals and whereas ECS services is to do when you want to run something for a longer period of time in my previous lesson I've already shown you that how you can create the ECS task and how you can run a container with the help of ECS task we actually define the task with the help of task definition where we configure some of the settings related to containers like which document you are going to use it on which port you are going to expose it and then CPU and memory utilization then you have to learn about the environment variables the volumes and various other stuffs we have seen up there while defining the task now here let me summarize you something like in simple words you are running a task is like launching a container okay which will going to stop after some times because it is for the short term but when you are talking about ECS services which will guarantee you that some of the number will going to run all the time through which it gives a feature of high availability and the self healing things like suppose one of your container stop just because of so and so errors and you want that particular container to be run all the time then you need to find the easiest services like that container will going to stop due to any error come up and it will going to run again okay uh, actually it will create a new instance for it so this is the major difference between easiest task and the easiest services so here now I'm going to create a easiest services here all the things will be same like the configurations which we done earlier all the things will remain same here so let's get into it now this is the dashboard now here you need to select you need to actually configure your service so first of all you need to give the name of your service and then the launch time which we have already selected then the number of tasks I'm just going to put the one number here that at any point of view that particular container must be running okay that particular one container must be running at all the times now here you can put the load balancing settings as well here I'm just going to give it a none here okay and then there will be a option for auto scaling as well you can see it is also optional so I'm also going to set to do not do auto scaling here okay so that if I'm going to able and enable this features it will going to charge as I'm using the free tier one and it doesn't allow me to use this feature right now like auto load balancing which will going to balance the load between different containers or auto scaling is like when the high load is there then it's going to scale that particular task that particular services the number of containers will going to be rise okay so these are some of the things which are here which you can do while creating the services now in this you can see that our service has we can create it and this is the it is in running state as you can see here so service created a one running task okay and here you can see that there are two ports are available here and you can see that it is accessing our application so I have used the task definition which I have defined earlier through which I have created the services and that services has created the task uh, only one task okay now this is our EC2 instance you can see the instance is running right now and there is a lot of options you can see here like public IP private IP running task is called one then the different options are there you can see that required CPU and available CPU right now the memory the ports and various other things you can see here okay from here you can also update your agent as well as you can deregister this particular services from EC2 instance okay so this is my cluster this is my container instances and this is the running service now from here you can also update the configurations of your services okay so 
I don't want to do any update here, but you can see the there is placement template is also there. Okay, how you can it will going to create a new instance once any container fail you to some error. Okay, this is a type of a replica. Okay, in replica set and Kubernetes or any other container orchestration, it will going to maintain the number of replicas that the same way this services is doing the job here okay and now i'm going to delete this particular services from here we need to just write delete me and yep our service is deleted through which the task which has been created with the help of services will also going to be deleted and various other things will going to happen so this is how you can create the ec2 sorry ecs services and how it will going to run your container your application okay that's all so for now keep learning keep exploring and keep moving